Okay, what I'd like to do today is to show you how to add a non-DOS camera, particularly something using OnViv, to a DOS NVR. So what I have today is a high vision, uh, two megapixel, uh, sorry, eight megapixel camera sitting on the network, uh, just plugged into a PoE switch, and I'm running their batch configuration software on my laptop. Now, high vision cameras, like most other cameras, have got some sort of activation uh, to them. So a DOS camera with a DOS NVR doesn't need to worry about any of that, it talks to it directly. A high vision camera with a high vision NVR is part of the startup process when you do it. However, when you're mixing matching brands of cameras and NVRs, unless they're made by the same people, for example, high vision cameras and say the Ness or NVIEW cameras, the same software and the same configuration won't work. So you may have to set up the cameras separately and then add them to the NVR afterwards. So in this case, we've already activated this particular camera because I did this for a, uh, a demo session in our, tra in our uh, training. Uh, so the camera is already activated. I've already given it an IP address and the rest. But in essential, essentially what would happen to it is plug it into my network, power it up, run the software, and then from here, it will come up with a device that's unactivated. And essentially, when you go to activate that, it will ask you for a username and password to do that, an IP address if you wish to, and then go from there. So on this device itself, I want to go into my configuration for this one. Now, the Hikvision or Hikvision cameras, by default, have OnViv turned off. So if I went and searched for these in the NVR itself, it wouldn't find the device under OnViv or any other kind of protocol because it just doesn't know what to do with it. So in this particular case, I'm going to change its IP address to match the rest of the network. Oops, that was not the IP address I wanted. Let's call it 230. I'm going to 192.168.1.1 because that's my address. Go across to here and on this page, you can see there's a whole heap of stuff that you can do here from upgrading a whole heap of cameras at once. You can restore the default parameters. You can do all sorts of other neat and funny tricks. So if you have a big system on this, you can set up all your parameters via something like Excel and comma separated variables format and then dump them all in in one go rather than have to go to every single camera, which is kind of cool. Uh, wiper if it has one and then here is the bit that we're really concerned about which is the onviv configuration so we want to be able to enable it for this particular camera itself so i'm going to enable it we add a user we add an administrator we're going to call it admin or whatever you want to and put a password in there so in this case i'm going to use p-a-s-s-w-o-r-d-0-1 because you know why not w-o-r-d-0-1 Next, and now I can reboot the device. So this will take a minute or so. In fact, it's probably a lot quicker than that. And then this device will be on my network at the IP address that I wanted it to, and it will have the uh, all the details the way I've set them up, including OnViv switched on. So I'll just switch across to the view for the NVR, and we'll see if we can add this device now. Alright, so now I'm in my 8-channel DOS NVR, and I want to add this camera. So, I go into my configuration page, go to my channel parameters page, go to my LAN search page. So, I already have two cameras connected up. One is to the internal IP PoE switch, so that's on the dot .2 subnet, and one is to an external PoE switch, so that's onto the dot .1 subnet. All right, go to my equipment search, search through from here, and you can see that we have, there's my OnViv device at the top, and that I know is a Hike Vision ID. Uh, that's its actual device name, so DS-2CD2385FWD-whatever. Okay, so now I want to add this device to my system. I'm going to add this as my camera number three, now you'll note that this is connected to an external PoE switch, so the dot one subnet is fine. Go back to my channel list here, and here is my OnViv camera. Now if I just leave it as it is and save from there, looks like everything's fine, looks like everything's working. Go across to my 
preview screen, try to view the camera and nothing. Okay, what have I done wrong? Well, I put a username and password on this camera, didn't I? So I need to go back to here, or you should have done it as you went through it. Go across to my channel number three, there it is. Put in my username, admin, put in my password that I set up a second ago. Save those settings, it says operation is successful. Go back to my preview screen, and because I already had this enabled before, right, here we go. And that, when this pops up, will be my Pike Vision camera. There it is, up on the screen and talking away the way it was supposed to. So, things you need to do to get this right, run their own configuration software, or use the camera's web interface to log into it directly if you know its IP address already. When you go into there, make sure you set a username and password for it. So, you know, admin and 123456 or password 01 or something crazy and uh, specialized, depending on what you're trying to do. When you go into the NVR, make sure it's on the right subnet, depending on whether it's connected directly to the unit via the LAN2 address or via a PoE switch on the rest of the network dot, via a dot one address in this particular case. When you've added the device from your equipment search, go into your IP channel listing and select that particular camera. Make sure you put the username and password in, save it, and then you should be able to see what's going on. Now, one note when it comes to OnBIF, certain things talk properly through OnBIF, other things do not. So if I go into my display settings page and go across to my channel three, that's here, you can see that the formatting and the name on the device itself, I have the ability to change these. So I can, at the moment it's set up as camera zero one. I can call this Pike Vision just because I want to. And I can call this Pike Vision on the device itself here. Save this one, save the information across and what should happen is that my NVR sends the information to the camera itself. And you can see that the camera name has changed up in the top corner here. But when it did that, the date has altered as well because it's dumped the camera name up into the top corner where the date was before. And my date hasn't come back up again. If I show my date on there, I can uh, re-enable it and then I can put my name on there again. And you can see they're over the top of each other. If I do my adjustment for the channel name, then I can move that one around on the screen, or I can move my date around on the screen to try and adjust it. But you'll notice that these are not working particularly well. It's because OnVIF isn't passing the information backwards and forwards the same way that, let's say, my channel one is a DOS camera and it's set up via S-Link. If I do any of the particular changes onto this camera that I want to do, so change my name to Street, change my name to Street, save that setting. It obviously sends the information through a lot faster. If I want to adjust where my name appears on the screen, you can see that it's moving down the screen to the position that I want it to go to. Uh, I can do the same thing with the date very easily because S-Link NVR talks to S-Link camera very simply. OnVIF has a few little bugs like that in it. Well, not bugs, it's just they talk a slightly different language to each other. My channel one from here, I can select my video and audio. If I go across to my channel three, I've got different settings and different features based on the camera itself. And you'll notice by default, it's tried to pull all the video in at 720p. Well, it's a 4K camera, so I'd rather have that talking at 4K. Thank you very much. With S-Link, they automatically talk to each other and say, hey, what can you do? Do this. So much, much easier when you've got devices that talk the same format. So high vision cameras with high vision NVR talk flawlessly. DOS cameras with DOS NVR talk flawlessly with each other. All right, so those are some details on adding an OnVIF camera such as this Hike Vision one to your DOS NVR. Uh, should be about the same process for pretty much any other brand of camera out there that supports OnVIF. And I hope that I hope you found that very useful.